Today I want to see if I can make a simpler version of Frankenfoam. One that I can power or add the air pressure to with my shop vac. Previt, Gia Jewich, and Anyang Haseo. Hey, it's Tom from Green Shorts. And in my last video, I attempted to use my shop vac to power Frankenfoam with this Schrader valve. It just wasn't enough pressure. This little Schrader valve hose was far too small to bring enough airflow in to generate enough turbulence and pressure to make that foam. I want to see if I can make not only a version that will work with a vacuum cleaner, but one that's a little bit simpler than this. I do think that Frankenfoam is still a pretty simple and easy to build foam generator. So if you have an air compressor or a tire inflator, which I use with this Schrader valve, those are both suitable options for using Frankenfoam to make foam to make aircrete. But I'm guessing that a lot more of you have a shop vac. And I actually had a comment that was asking if a shop vac would work. And that's what initially prompted my first try at that. So these are the parts that I've got for this. And I'll put a list of them in the description below. Altogether, this cost about 40 bucks. That was before I had to buy the, the one inch pipe that unfortunately I could not get in a two foot section. That added eight bucks to the project cost. And initially I was thinking I made Frankenfoam for about 30 bucks, 35 bucks. So of course that was several years ago and you can just see how much inflation has affected the cost of PVC. One additional material I'm going to use is some nylon window screen and I happen to have some scraps of this laying around. So that would be one potential additional cost if you decide to make this. But I'm guessing you might have an old screen laying around. I've traditionally used stainless steel wool for the diffusion mechanism inside Frankenfoam, but I had a comment that asked if window screen might work, so I'm gonna give that a try. And one last thing here, I actually have simplified my design since I bought these parts, so I may be able to pull some of these out of the list as I build this thing out. The goal here of this particular project is to be as simple and as inexpensive as possible. My main connections are going to be a one inch pipe going through into the two inch pipe with an elbow like this. I'm gonna have my one inch pipe come all the way through this fitting. So there's a little lip here that will need to be filed down. And a rounded file here. Nice and smooth, that lip has been removed. I'm gonna cut a 12 inch section of the one inch pipe to serve as the diffusion section. Because this is gonna be low pressure, I'm actually gonna try and do this just dry fit, uh, it, it, at least initially. If, we'll see how it works out, and if I need to go back and glue it, I will. So I just need enough here to go halfway through this fitting. Actually, that's pretty loose. I think I'm gonna go ahead and glue this section. But I'm not gonna glue the inside because I'm not exactly sure how long I want this diffusion section to be. Twist that till it locks up. All right, I think that's the right decision. The joints here on this elbow will probably get the most movement, and so uh, I think having them glued would be a good idea. You can see here how <laughs> my process is a bit intuitive. Most of the time on this channel, you're seeing a prototype, so uh, this is definitely the first time I'm doing this. So to this, I'm going to connect uh, a, an adapter to go down to one and a half. So one and a half inch PVC to one inch, then to inside 
and then we're of course doing this connector to the reservoir body with the two inch pipe. So I need one more section of one inch pipe to connect the elbow to this adapter. Of course I'm cutting the PVC over my concrete patio here so I can vacuum up all these scraps of PVC, keep them from getting into the soil. Hey, train's here. I think that has got plenty of tension to hold without glue. Again, we'll see how that works and then adjust if necessary. And this elbow goes on here. The reason I went with the 45 too is because this thing sits at an angle up onto a bucket. The reservoir coming up this way. I want the uh, back hose to be able to hood it, hook in straight in like this. Now I'm going to add the diffusion section. This will just be a dry fit. And then this gets a cap on the other end. To drill the diffusion holes, I'm going to use a 1 8 inch drill bit to drill all the way through. And then I'm going to come back with a countersink to give it a little bit of a nozzle on the outside. Because most of the liquid is going to be underneath this pipe, I'm going to do a row first along the bottom here. I'm going to start with six here and I'm going to spread them out a little bit more as they go up the pipe. These are about half an inch apart. I'll do more holes, but I want to go ahead and do the nozzle. The slower is better. All right, I'm happy with this nozzle look. Now I'm going to add some more holes around the rest of the pipe here. All right, the diffusion section is drilled out. I'm really happy with how these nozzles look. Hopefully they function like I'm imagining they will. I'm not sure I'm gonna need all 12 inches of this diffusion, which is why I just dry fitted this cap. I'm gonna test it like this. My thinking is that because I'm operating with lower pressure that more turbulence is gonna be better. So. The majority of the airflow hitting, of course, in this lower section here where most of the holes are facing down into the liquid. And then as it generates foam, uh, these other jets, you know, kind of agitate it some more as it's coming up the, the tube. Of course, the screen section comes in in the top half of the reservoir. And one question I have is, is this enough screen? Uh, again, by shortening the diffusion section, I could get more screen in there. To assemble the reservoir, I'm just going to add this coupling and then add in the two inch pipe. And now I'm going to put as much screen in there as I can. This looks to be about a three foot by three foot section of screen. I think what I'm going to do is just stuff it in the pipe.
All right, it's pushing into about right there, eight to 10 inches of screen in there. And then on this end, I'm just gonna use a two inch elbow. If I need extra back pressure, I'll add this and then a little small section of three quarter inch there. I'm gonna try it without that first. All right, this is ready to test. Ah, one more thing. I need to take off my Schrader cap here on the vac. And I'm gonna just try and dry fit this vacuum hose with a piece of inner tube, of course, on it from the last configuration. Put that in there and let it seat up on its own. It's gonna need a little bit of a kickstand. I just made something temporary. I'm gonna mix up some foaming solution using my normal proportions. One ounce of seven generation dish detergent to 16 ounces of water, or two cups. This is bottled water that I picked up from the sidelines after my soccer game last night. We'll just leave their half drunk bottles sitting there. I pick them up, I use the water, and then I recycle the bottles. Give this a gentle stir. I don't want that dish soap sitting on the bottom. I also don't want it foaming up though either. You know, Franken foam has a T-valve here with a threaded cap on it to add this solution. But to keep vacuum foam simple, I'm just gonna fill it up from the top end. I'm gonna give this a few seconds to work its way down through the screen. I got my vacuum cleaner hose hooked up to the output instead of the input, so I'm pushing air instead of pulling it. Got my eyes and ears on, JW. All right, it's time for the big reveal. All right, not sure if you saw that, but let me run it back in slow-mo. Yeah, it shot the whole screen out. <laughs> but that tells me I'm getting some nice pressure. It also tells me I'm gonna need that back pressure. Let me try this out. And a small section of three quarter inch here. Still gonna try and pressure fit, dry fit this end here. Hopefully it didn't blow it off. All right, the foaming solution is loaded. Let's do a take two. It's definitely producing some nice, rich foam. I like this. I do think there's more air coming through than I'd like. I think I will go in and shorten the diffusion section and add some more screen. So reduce the amount of airflow, create a little more back pressure. There's not quite as dense as I'm used to seeing with the inflator or with an air compressor, but not a bad prototype. I think it needs a little bit of tuning. So I'm actually gonna take it apart and shorten the diffusion section and then add some more screen. Ooh, that was tight. All right, so I think I'm gonna cut this off halfway to start. I won't cover up any of these holes. Mm -hmm. 
the shortened diffusion section. Say that ten times. I'm going to put the diffusion section back in. I'm going to push the screen down up against it and then add in some more screen. I'm out of my nylon screen, but I have some stainless steel screen. It's a little more rigid though. We'll see if this works. Those ends are a little prickly. I'm gonna grab a glove. All right, now I'm gonna load up the solution. It's not as convenient to add it from the end like this. The, the goal with this particular foam generator was to be as few parts as possible to make it as inexpensive as possible. If I were to refine this a little bit more, I'd add that T joint to the middle with the screw cap to make it easier to add solution there in the middle. And of course, if I wanted to glue this whole thing up, it wouldn't be possible to do this as well. This end of the foam generator is the lower pressure end. So pressure fitting this for the long term should be just fine. All right, let's take three. There's a little bit of air leakage down here on the other end of back and foam, as you can see from the bubbles. I think it's okay to have a little bit of air bleeding off here. I'd rather the air bleed out than the connection pop off. Okay, so I think that was a mistake. Of course, not a mistake, it's an iteration. I think having more airflow is better. The quality of the foam that I produced last time was, was nicer. The foam I'm generating here is probably good enough for aircrete, so I'm gonna consider this a success. But still some more experimentation to do. I'm gonna place an order for some stainless steel wool, and then in part two, I will see if that makes a difference in producing some better foam. I think I'm also gonna go back to the longer diffusion tube and see if that helps as well. Back in foam. Uh, definitely headed in the right direction. Much better performance than the last time I tried to use the shot back to push air. And that's 100% because we've got more airflow going through a one inch pipe versus that tiny Schrader valve. Although looking at it like this, is this vacuum foam or Saxon foam? Yes, I'm 100% aware of my cheesiness. So sorry for the uh, somewhat anticlimactic ending here. Um, you know this is an experimentation channel, but I hope you're accustomed to that by now. <laughs> Thanks to my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible, and thank you for all the wonderful comments, suggestions, and ideas. This vacuum foam is the result of two separate ideas. The idea of powering it with a shop vac, Skeeter, and using window screen. I think the foam I got on the second try was rich enough to make aircrete, so I do think vacuum foam is a viable option. I am curious if the stainless steel wool will indeed help this make richer foam. Stay tuned for that in another video. As always, my mission at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green, and save a little green by doing it yourself. While concrete is not the greenest material, making it into aircrete does make it more sustainable and it opens up a lot of unique, interesting uses as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next Saturday.